Well, hi, it's Grandma Roseanne, and we are going to make a red velvet cake, which is everyone's favorite. Cameraman goes crazy for it. My brother Reggie goes crazy for it. I'm okay with it, <laughs> but everybody else loves it. It's the 4th of July, so we are looking at our beautiful flag and loving our beautiful country. So in honor of this, we're gonna do the red, white, and I'm gonna kind of figure out how to get a blue on it as well. So red velvet, a lot of people really think it's an extremely difficult cake, and it's not, it really isn't. This is a beautiful recipe that I have had, I've made so many times, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. I really do. We're going to start out with one third cup of water and one tablespoon of processed cocoa. I'm going to bring that up to a boil. You want to make sure that your um, cocoa is mixed in there, okay? You want to be sure. And this is only going to take a moment to do. So while that is coming up to a boil, I'm going to start creaming everything over here. Now here I have three quarters cup of softened butter. And if you have softened butter, wonderful. If not, like 90% of the time, I forget to take it out and soften it. You're still gonna be able to do it. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer in the mixer to do it. So we're gonna put three quarters cup butter in there. And I'm going to, going to mix in one and a half cups of sugar. And we're just gonna cream that. I like to add it gradually and you know it's well creamed when the butter becomes pale in color and it's really fluffy. So there's no big hurry here. Always, always, always scrape down your sides. It's really important because that likes to really climb up the sides and you want it all to be really well creamed. Now we need to add the eggs. We're gonna add three eggs and we're gonna add them one at a time. I really do like to scrape them down after each addition of egg. Whoops, is that a second egg? how pale these eggs are, uh, eggs, how pale this batter has gotten. It's really fluffy, can you see that? And it's really pale in color. So now I'm going to add the boiling water and the cocoa. So as I told you, it's one tablespoon of cocoa and one third cup of boiling water. Scraping down those sides again. What are you guys doing for the 4th of July? I hope all of you are going to go have fun on the 4th as you should. When our children were little, then we would take them to the beach with thousands of other people. They would watch the fireworks. They were all excited. It took us two hours to get out of there. Now the kids are grown. They have their own kids <laughs> that they can do that with. But cameraman and I live really, really high up. So from our house, we can watch six different counties of fireworks. So we're just getting together with our neighbors and we're just going to grill, barbecue, have nice cocktails and sit out on our deck chairs and watch the fireworks. When you're older, those are the wonderful things to have. All right, now what we're going to do now is we're going to add the food coloring. If you go to the store and you buy the one that is typically a liquid, that's really not the one you want. You want an intensity of color. Hold on one second. 
Because sometimes if you know what to get, it's all the better. You're going to want a gel. This is Chef, uh, Chef Master, and there's 12 colors in this set. The colors are intense. I hate it when I order a red velvet cake in a restaurant somewhere and it comes back looking brown. I mean, really? It's like buying a blood orange and it's yellow. I don't get that. So what you want to do is you want to use the best that you can use. And this truly from my experience is about the best food coloring. You want two teaspoons of this in here. Let me get that off. Two teaspoons of gel. every bit of color. Nothing gets to stay in the spoon. And as I'm getting this, I will tell you, my daughter-in-law, precious daughter-in-law, got me these fantastic spoons, they're magnetic, and she said, I expect to see them on a video somewhere. So Danielle, these are the spoons I'm using. They're cool, you guys, really cool. I didn't know there was such a thing as magnetic measuring spoons. And Danielle, you better make this for those babies that I love so much. I have three grandchildren and they are the love of my life. You wanna come and take a look at this? Quick, come and look and see what's happening to this color. Ooh, look at that. That is red velvet. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean about using a product that is really designed to give you a high intensity of color? This will do it. Scrape down your sides and go to the bottom of that bowl as well. Go to the very bottom. Is there stuff that always likes to hang out there? All right. Now to this, we are going to add a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, two teaspoons of vanilla, and we're gonna mix that up. Now in here I have one cup of buttermilk and two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So we're going to alternate the flour and the buttermilk. I'm going to start out with the flour You don't want to over mix it this time. You only want to make sure it's well blended. Little bit of buttermilk. to this, you guys, just enjoy the process. Buttermilk is wonderful with so many things. Now, if you don't have buttermilk on hand, don't let that stop you from making this. One cup of milk, one tablespoon of white vinegar, let it sit for 10 minutes, buttermilk. Final addition, final addition. Whoa, that wasn't so good. Scrape down those sides. holders here and they're ready to go. Um, you can do a, a two layer cake out of this just as well. However, we're going to a um, 4th of July function tomorrow. So I wanted to take some cupcakes. So you're going to fill them about three quarters of the way full. That one's a little high.
guys, don't you love the color that this is? I think it's so beautiful. My brother is in the hospital and he's been in the hospital for quite a while now. So to have to spend the 4th of July in a hospital is just not, not nice. So I'm taking him cupcakes tomorrow. He'll like them. So we're getting ready to put these in the oven right now. I have 21 cupcakes here. So it makes a nice, um, it's a really nice number of cupcakes. Now I've got the oven preset for 350. It's going to go in for 18 minutes and then we will test it. And while that is doing its baking magic, what we're gonna do is we're going to make the frosting that goes on top of it. I wish you could see cameraman right now. He's going, <laughs> yeah. God, he loves his sweets. Mm. All right, now before you do that, give it a couple of taps. Get air bubbles out of it. All right. Gonna pop it in the oven. I'll see you in 18 minutes. Oh my goodness. Come over here, cameraman. Let them look at what we have done. That is beautiful. If you're talking red velvet, we are talking red velvet. Now, it's important that we cool them off. So we're going to take them out of here and put them up let them cool down completely and then we're going to frost them and the frosting is very important so i will show you how to do that just as soon as they cool down we will make the frosting okay so give us a couple minutes we'll be right back okay well our cupcakes have cooled down um, to absolute room temperature I started out with 21. I now have 20. Thank you, cameraman. <laughs> he ate one. So now it's time for the classic frosting that goes on a red velvet cake. So we have eight ounces of cream cheese. This is such a good frosting and it is so incredibly easy. Four ounces of butter, softened. Two teaspoons of vanilla and you want to whip this until it becomes nice and fluffy we have this well mixed and now what we're going to do is add one cup of powdered sugar be sure you sift it you don't want lumps in it and powdered sugar is always lumpy so I'm going to start with about half I don't know about frosting that's easier than this, really. You know, KitchenAid has one of those um, blades that actually scrapes as it goes. I really want one, but I can't figure out which one to get because I have got 9,000 different models of KitchenAid. Perfect consistency. If, because of weather or whatever else is happening in your area, if it's too runny when you um, complete this process right here, just put it in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes, let, let it harden up a little bit. It'll be easy to work with. But our conditions were great here. So this is a good consistency. Now you can just use an offset spatula and just put it in, you know, just frost it. But I just thought it would take just another minute to do it really kind of pretty. So I got a pastry bag. We're just gonna fill this up. like this you have
haven't used the pastry bag before. There's no magic to it. It's really pretty simple. You just get the tip you want. Then you want to push this down. You want to get all the air out of it. All the air. Then you twist it. You get your little cupcake. And you can make any design you would like. What do you think about that? I think that is so cute. And I want the red to show around it because I want people to know what they're having. So let's just do one more. With the tip, just press down. Just like that. All right, now I'm gonna finish these off. You don't have to sit here and watch me do 20 of them, but I know cameraman is absolutely dying to get his hands into one of these that's frosted. Well, if you want to be the hit of the party on the 4th of July, walk in with red velvet cupcakes. They're beautiful and I don't know, I think what I would do is I would take a couple of little flags and just kind of put them in, into a few of them. I think it'd be really festive to do and very easy to do. So, but it's all about tasting it. It's all about the taste. So let's see what this little puppy will do. It holds up beautifully. Well, <laughs> it holds up beautifully. Doesn't it look cute? All right. You're gonna like it. You are going to like it. This is flippin' delicious, you guys. Really good. So, with that being said, Happy 4th of July, ingredients below, subscribe, hit the bell, come back, um, stay safe, and have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Bye.